Hello and welcome to Diversity. I'm Sofia Bettiza. And I'm Jade Garcia. Today's top stories are Roller Derby, Bicycle Accidents in London, Star Wars Auditions and World AIDS Day. But let's start with our on-campus pub. Sadler's is going to close. But not before a nicer, better and classier pub will open its gates. Felix Franz interviewed our student union president to get the full details. Last week the Islington planning community has confirmed City University's remodeling plan. This includes the creation of a new university entrance on Goswell Road, the relocation of the students' union, the construction of an all-faith prayer room and also response to the demand for more teaching space. This takes us toll on settlers. Um, I think it was time because the university wanted to create extra, extra lecture space and one of the ways uh, they're doing so is getting rid of this space and having it as another um, lecture theatre because there is demand for lecture space. So as, as a result of that the university didn't want to completely remove um, the facility of an on-campus bar so they just looked to uh, relocate it elsewhere. Elsewhere means in the Tate building on Goswell Road. Giulio Folino told us what we can expect from the new university pub. He also brought drawings and designs from the current state of planning. We fed in on the designs. Uh, what we've wanted to do is create a space that students want to go to. Uh, we have aimed to make it look less clinical, so we're looking at things like the lighting. We want better um, sound quality, uh, a new speaker system, um, and generally sort of um, uh, a place that has a bit more atmosphere, uh, with a bit more uh, a combination of natural light during the day and things like underfloor lighting during the evening, and you know, cool cool bits and bobs that you see in places like the blacksmith and toffee maker, nice designs, big chalkboards. We just want it to look completely different to here. That's it. The new university pub is going to be located right here, right next to the Benson Street bus stop. There's going to be a panoramic view window on that side of the building to provide for more natural light, but also to be more visible for the students and for the people from the area. The scheduled opening is September 2014, but no worries, we were promised that settlers will remain open until the new pub opens. This is Felix Franz, reporting for Diversity. The number of cyclists in London is constantly increasing, but many feel that London's roads still aren't safe enough. Recent accidents have caused a public outcry. Our reporter Lara Gerler has this story. Flowers and words of grief are laid down at Bow Roundabout for a 24-year-old girl after she was hit by a lorry. Five cyclists lost their lives on London's road in just nine days. A few of them lost their lives at Bow this year. So we hit Bow Roundabout, one of the most dangerous spots for cyclists in London. The bicycle lane behind me in blue stops right before the roundabout and cyclers are left in a blind spot of cars and lorries. Despite the mayor's initiative to introduce blue cycle lanes, the traffic structure at Bow Roundabout remains obviously flawed. It's happened before, you know, like one was enough for me. I mean, why do we have to wait for the second one? With the public pressure mounting, London's elected watchdog, the London Assembly, put the pressure high up on their agenda on Wednesday. Questioned by assembly members, Mayor Boris Johnson said cyclists had to obey the rules if they wanted to be safe on the road. What we can't do is uh, provide engineering of every inch of, of road surface in such a way as to guard against behaviour that is irrational and unexpected. Green Party local transport spokesperson Caroline Russell says that the culture on London's roads needs to change urgently. At the moment, there's too much victim blaming going on. There's too much um, sense, oh, cyclists have got it all coming to them because they don't behave properly. To continue public pressure, cycling protesters are organizing a die-in outside the TFL headquarters this Friday afternoon. Laura Gerla, London. Do you like to go fast, enjoy getting scraped up, and even knocking people down once in a while? Then roller derby is just the sport for you. Our reporter Catherine Ayorio put on her roller skates and joined the London's Rock and Rollers to see what it takes to be a dirty girl. She means derby girl. Have you ever wondered what it takes to be a derby girl? According to the London Rock and Rollers derby team, it takes tons of practice, falling down, and being able to get a couple bumps and scratches.
There are five players on each team. One jammer, who races around the track faster than the rest of the team. One pivot, who usually stays in front of the blockers and make them go faster or slower. And then three blockers, who try to keep the other team's jammers from passing them. The jammer is the only player that can score points. The jammer's team gets a point every time the jammer passes one of the other team's players. To score a point, the jammer has to play fair and stay on the track when they pass someone. Jammers get a two minute time period, called a jam, when they get to score points. All roller derby players have a derby name, a nickname used by a skater while playing. Derby names can be seen as an opportunity to adopt an alternative on-track persona. For one player, choosing her original derby name would have left her mom a little uncomfortable. My friend joking is to be Wonder Cox. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I didn't really want my mom shouting that out as well. London Rock and Roller's team has a diverse age group of women, ranging from 18 to mid-40s. These average women may seem tough on the track, but off the track, they have nine to five jobs and many of them have children. They're always having babies. It's a group of women. For those looking to join a roller derby team, you can go to London Rock and Roller's website to find more details. And don't forget, if you're looking to do roller derby, you're gonna get bitten by the bug so quickly. So addictive. I'm Catherine I Oreo, Diversity, London. This Sunday is World AIDS Day, a time to bring awareness to this disease. City's LGBT Society and Student Union President say this is not just about the LGBT community, it affects many others. Mary F. Sendiu reports. HIV and AIDS are not just a matter of sexuality. According to a study conducted by the Public Health England, 45% of the people diagnosed with HIV in 2012 were heterosexuals. Secretary of City University's LGBT Society, Zoe Bredo, said that AIDS can affect anyone. AIDS really is not just an LGBT issue. Um, it is a society and global issue. About 50% of um, those affected with um, HIV in the UK do identify as homosexual or bisexual, but that means that 50% still identify as heterosexual. In honor of World AIDS Day, which is celebrated on December 1, City University is organizing a fundraising event to raise awareness about this disease. Volunteers will be collecting donations from Monday the 2nd until Friday the 6th. All of the money will be donated to the National AIDS Trust. According to the president of the university's LGBT society, Tom Glenn, the aim of this event is to raise awareness and challenge existing stereotypes about HIV and gay men. The biggest stigma is that it's just gay people that get it. It's not true. Whilst, obviously, it can be more prominent within the gay community, which is one of the purposes we want to raise so much awareness to tell people, get tested, you know, get regular, get, get regular tests. Even if you're not showing symptoms, you could still have the disease. And the importance of safe sex and preventing any other STDs Coming out of the closet is not an easy thing to do, though it's something not to be afraid of either. I think the main message to be sent out is not to be afraid. Um, AIDS and HIV is one of those things that is, has become stigmatised and the more, like I said, you reach out to people and make them realise not to be afraid, um, that's the best thing you can try and do. While World AIDS Day is approaching, AIDS activists use different means to raise awareness. On a national level, the Stop AIDS campaign has been lobbying parliamentarians last Wednesday. The campaign started at 8 o'clock, but within 30 minutes, the director, Ben Sims, was able to characterise it as successful. It's going well because I've just met David Cameron, so I think I get the prize of the day in terms of lobbying. Um, uh, David's just promised me that he's going to be wearing the red ribbon at par uh, Prime Minister Question Time, which is later today. Um, so what, I'll check that out, and if he does, then I consider that a success. In 2012, 1.6 million died because of AIDS. According to Mr. Sims, that's a reason enough to be out and lobbying parliamentarians. Mary Afxendiu, Diversity, London. I sense a disturbance in the force. As if thousands of voices are suddenly crying out in ecstasy and excitement. We sent our heroes, Kaylee and Felix, to discover the source of this new force. Da, 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 da. Good morning. 
this is Kaylee Monaghan reporting from Twickenham Stadium where we are at the Star Wars Open Auditions. As you can see all around me, we have hundreds if not a thousand people here trying to get the lead roles for the next upcoming Star Wars film. So let's go and talk to some of these people. Come on. Star Wars, man. <laughs> we were up at half four, so, and then we just had to get the bus and then walk. And then freeze. Yeah. And then freeze. <laughs> it is really, it's been cold. We've been queuing. It's been nice though, it's been an experience. Nothing could dampen the crowd's spirits, not even the freezing cold. And some, well, they were a little more than ready to stand in line for several hours. On your back. And, yeah, we got <laughs> water, Ritz, snack crackers, eight sandwiches. Uh, man, we even brought the computer just in case we were in there and there was like some time to sit down and watch a movie. <laughs> The Lucasfilm Company said that it is seeking actors for the two lead roles in the upcoming Star Wars film, due to be released December 2015. They specifically requested an athletic and beautiful young woman to play a street smart girl in her late teens, and a an handsome and athletic young man to fill the role of a smart and capable 20-year-old. No, I am your While most of the people here came from the greater London area, some traveled quite far to attend these auditions. Uh, Iowa, it's smack dab in the middle. Yeah. So I'm Monica Cantara, and uh, I, come, I came from Spain. I'm from Spain. For many people here, getting the part was not nearly as important as having the actual experience. <laughs> I think you have to do it, don't you? Even yeah. You just do it once. You, have to you then two years from now will be like watching a film and be like, we auditioned for that. That's cool, you know? May the fools be This is Kaylee Monaghan reporting from Twickenham Stadium. And now for the Versi special. Yesterday was Thanksgiving. Let's take a look at how City University students celebrated this American tradition. With a European twist. Where are we going? To the kitchen. To do what? To check status on turkey. <laughs> what do you know about turkey on Thanksgiving? They eat it. They, I mean Americans. Happy Thanksgiving! Yay! It's the monster turkey. I'm working on some gravy. We have the little one in here staying warm. Yeah, baby turkey. Baby turkey. Berkey. Oh, baby turkey. Wait, so we have mama turkey? Baby turkey. Baby turkey. Baby turkey. Baby turkey. Baby turkey. Yeah. for this week's episode. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You won't be disappointed. See you next week. <laughs>